Well, this time next week, barring a hanging chat or hacked voting machine, we should know who the next president of the United States will be. Hillary Clinton is favored, but by no means a shoe in She still needs women and minorities to turn up and cast their ballots. As for Donald Trump, he needs blue-collar white men who have been flocking to him to come out in droves, something that hasn't happened in decades. Now, either, either outcome is possible. Either way, the world looks on with a mixture of wonder and uncertainty. And with more on all this, we have convened an international panel for you in London. Fawaz Georges, he is the, con the chair of contemporary Middle Eastern studies at the London School of Economics in our Washington studio. Chanand Rajata, foreign editor and Washington correspondent for the Times of India. And in Toronto, Canadian Alex Mihailovich, a news correspondent for Russian broadcaster RT America. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, listen, I want to begin with one question I'm going to ask of all of you, because it has been said that this 2016 U.S. election campaign has been like no other campaign before it. Do you agree with that statement and why? Fawaz, let's begin with you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, here you have uh, Donald Trump, uh, hardly any knowledge of foreign policy. Um, it's an open page. He criticizes both parties. Uh, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, he flirts with the Russian President Putin. He has turned foreign policy, in particular, on my part of the world, the greater Middle East, into a clash of civilization, uh, uninformed, incoherent. Um, I mean, think about it. Here, the United States is engaged in a campaign in Mosul against the so-called Islamic State, and he keeps saying it's disastrous, it's failing. Uh, American leaders are losers. A presidential campaign, an American presidential uh, candidate. Uh, it, it, it's unbelievable how ignorant and uninformed the world is really terrified. I'll tell you, I travel a great deal in the Middle East. I live in the heart of Europe. I mean, the world is anxious about Donald Trump presidency. Chidandan, what do you say? I totally agree with your panelists. Uh, uh, first of all, this is this is uh, there. Are, these are two unique candidates. Uh, you know, the United States has never had a, a female, uh, you know, president or even a, a female uh, nominee uh, uh, from any major party, and then uh, a, a businessman with absolutely zero uh, political executive experience. Uh, so the nominees themselves are uh, unique, uh, and then there is uh, this incredible. Uh, campaign, which uh, you know, th throughout the past year or so, uh, you know, you have seen a man of uh, stunning ignorance, uh, you know, climb on top of the Republican uh, pile and uh, represent uh, that party um, against much opposition within their own within their own party, and uh, it's it's really a unique election. I have never seen anything like this before, purely in terms of excitement. I mean, of course, you know, the two uh, presidential elect previous presidential elections featuring. Uh, Barack Obama, they were unique uh, in terms of the kind of passion they generated. Uh, but in terms of candidates, uh, this is uh, absolutely unique. Alex? You know, you were talking about an election where most people that I talk to are talking about voting for a lesser evil. So we have two candidates here. Uh, Donald Trump, basically a Frankenstein of everything that's vulgar and vile in this world. And then you have somebody that's like Hillary Clinton, who's backing seven countries being bombed at this moment and wants to extend her military campaign to a no-fly zone in Syria, which will be in direct conflict with Russia. So from a foreign affairs perspective, Hillary Clinton, I know the people that I speak to in Europe and in Southeast Asia are very afraid of that person. When we have Donald Trump talking about, uh, you know, possibly uh, ta actually having conversations with other nations when it comes to, to wars. But at the same time, we're talking about this guy who came out of nowhere, really, in the respect of politics and who really, really is a vile individual. He's racist. He's homophobic. He's sexist. But at the same time, a lot of people are saying we need a reset in the United States. And if we vote for Hillary Clinton, it's just kicking the can down the road for four more years. Well, Fawaz, let's bring you in again, because you were talking about the impact this is all having on the Middle East. If that's the reset Americans want, what does that do in terms of resetting, if you will, the United States relationship with the Middle East? Well, first of all, uh, we must be very clear when we talk about Hillary Clinton, the potential uh, foreign policy of Hillary Clinton. For your own viewers, Canadians and North Americans and global audience, there will be no daylight between Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration. More continuity than discontinuity. Hillary Clinton has made it very clear she will not, she would not intervene directly militarily. 
that he is Shi will rely on local forces, whether in Iraq and Syria. Uh, yes, she is known for her interventionist impulse. She is more willing to be muscular, to threaten the use of force. But she is on record. She has learned the lessons of Iraq. And most people in the Middle East actually are terrified of Trump, not only because he does not know foreign policy, because he is an isolationist because nobody knows what his foreign policy is. Because also Donald Trump himself has made it very clear that basically he's not interested in the world. He views foreign policy through the lens of business, as opposed to really understanding America's relations with NATO, understanding the gravity of the crisis in the Middle East, whether you're talking about ISIS or gluing the states back together in Iraq and Syria, in Libya and Yemen. So even though people in the Middle East the region where I work on, are very critical of both candidates. Most people in the region and the leadership are basically terrified of a Trump presidency because of his ignorance, because also he views the Middle East. I mean, think of what he has said about Islam and Muslims. He wants to ban Muslims from coming to America. He views foreign policy in terms of the clash of civilization. I mean, this, this is insidious. That's how it's seen in the world and the Middle East as well. Well, that's Donald Trump. But Alex, I want to bring you back in because, you know, Russia has come up several times in this campaign. Democrats accusing Russia uh, of hacking the DNC and Clinton operative computers. Uh, Democrats accusing Donald Trump of essentially becoming a puppet of Putin. How is all of that being received and heard in Russia? Well, I mean, it's, it's silly. I mean, a puppet of Putin, really. I, I don't know what the relation is. There's been no relation proof between the two. And I have to step back just for one moment. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, understanding the Middle East, I, we know what Hillary Clinton did in Libya. We know that she was fundamental in that. We know that she played a part because she knew that Qatar and Saudi Arabia were funding ISIS and moving weapons from Libya over to where Syria is and Iraq is. We knew all this. Was, she knew all this was going down. I've been talking about this for years. So Hillary Clinton being some saint for the Middle East, Middle East? No. Yeah, we can predict what she's going to do may, because may she's done it already. There's may, blood on her hands. As for Russia, may, may, they, may, they may. want the situation to stop. When it comes to Syria, Russia has been taking care of business for the past year. They want to bring back peace to that region, and they want to work with America. Out of the two candidates, Trump's the only one that's even talked about speaking to the Russians and possibly bringing peace may, and may, working may. together on a peace in that area. Fawaz, I know you want to jump in. Uh, may take I, a few may. seconds, please. Uh, all I can say First is all, uh, we, no. when it comes to Trump... Sorry, sorry you, Chandon, you, and, you, Chandon, and sorry, if I'm going to ask you to hold one second. Fawaz, sure. you were trying to jump in there. Go ahead. No one, no one is saying that Hillary Clinton is a saint. No one is saying that Hillary Clinton has not committed mistakes. She herself has acknowledged the mistakes. We are comparing two candidates, Hillary Clinton's potential foreign policy and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is uninformed, incoherent, all over the map. He does not understand foreign policy. He views foreign policy through the lens of business and the clash of civilization. I mean, this would basically, if you ask me in the world, who is cheering for Donald Trump? It, two candidates, ISIS and Putin. I'm not suggesting that the United States should not really improve its relations with Russia. That's not the question. But he has not framed America's relation with Russia in terms of a foreign policy doctrine. Uh, this is where we're talking about, we're not saying, we're not defending Hillary Clinton. We're saying the world would be much safer with Hillary Clinton and the United States would be a, in a much steady hand with Hillary Clinton. I wish we had a third. We have had the third candidate. We have two candidates. Who would you vote, vote for in terms of an international rational foreign policy? Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? This is the challenge facing America, Americans on Tuesday. Chenandit, I know you want to get in. I, I was just going to say, the thing is, with Hillary Clinton, you at least know, uh, you know, where she stands, where she comes from. There's a record of, uh, you know, foreign policy handling, good, bad, indifferent. That depends on which part of the world we, you come from and how uh, her uh, views and policies have affected that part of the world. With Trump, you don't know anything. And, and, and this in itself, you know, Trump being an ignoramus is not a sin. I mean, uh, George Bush wasn't, uh, you know, a, a genius, but at least he built together a team uh, in, in, in 2000. Uh, you disastrous. know, we called them neocons, and disastrous. you knew you knew what they represented, and there was some amount of coherence. You, you might not have agreed with it, but with Trump, you don't even know who his foreign policy advisors are. And here's a man who talks so cavalierly. I mean, this is a man who says uh, it's fine for everybody to have nuclear weapons, and uh, you know, some of his statements <laughs> are completely off the wall. You don't know whether to believe them 
uh, or not. And then every, every every time he says something provocative, he either say he denies saying it, even though it's on record, or he rolls it back. He changes his mind. I mean, this is this is a man who is uh, to me to my mind and the way I've seen it, completely uh, unpredictable, immature. Uh, and there's an element of, uh, you know, uh, absolute, you know, shock, you know, in, uh, with the kind of stuff he ca comes up with. Most of it is off the cuff, or top of the head. You really don't know. I, I, I find it utterly irresponsible that such a man should be so close to the White House, uh, to, to be getting to the White House. You know, uh, I, I think America deserves better. The world deserves better. Uh, sadly, we are running out of time, but I want to end this the way I started, with asking the same question of all of you. Because the United States, its accomplishments, its democracy, it's sometimes, oftentimes, held up as an example around the world. What has this election cycle done to America's reputation abroad? Alex, let's begin with you. Well, domestically speaking, look, the, the North Dakota pipeline, and neither one of these candidates is even talking about it. They're avoiding it. Fracking. I mean, they're poisoning their own people. Nobody's talking about it. Uh, the fracking's going to continue under either one of these individuals. Internationally, they're both scary as hell. And I think, you know, in my office, I, I work with uh, Larry King. I learned, work with Ed Schultz. Jesse Ventura's there all the time. There's big names. Chris Hedges. All these people are divided on this. Uh, most of my office were Bernie supporters. It was the third party. Jill Stein is still a big name. There. That's what the people are talking about in my office in D.C. And me personally, I love Bernie Sanders. But look, we're in a situation now, like I said, kicking the can down the road for another four years of the same. We can't afford to waste any more time. I think if Trump was to win, which is a horrible thing to say, at least he'd be under a microscope at all times. And possibly something could, could, good could come out of it with Hillary Clinton. Worst case scenario, World War III. Chenandan, uh, what has this election cycle done to America's reputation abroad? I think what it has shown is starting to show is this is not the United States of America, but this is the divided States of America. These are two very distinct Americas, uh, you know, at war, at electoral war at least, with, with each other. If, even if you just a cursory look at the electoral map will tell you that th th there are the coastal states uh, where, where there are, uh, you know, uh, ethnically more diverse, better educated people uh, who are backing uh, Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. And then there's middle America, uh, blue collar, white, in, in, incredible amount of resentment, disenchantment, uh, who are backing uh, Donald Trump. Uh, so it's very clear that this is this is a country which is deeply divided, and it's divided along uh, you know ethnic lines, racial lines. Uh, it's a it's a modernist, multicultural United States, very similar to Canada. In fact, uh, a, a couple of elections ago, I don't know if you uh, remember, there was a map which showed the United States of Canada, uh, with Canada descending down the, the U.S. coast, and then there was the, the Middle America, which was called Jesus Land. And uh, this it's become even more stark in this election that uh, the, the, there are two. Uh, uh, Americas, and this is something I'm having to uh, explain to my readers all the time, uh, that the United States, sadly, is mm -hmm. now looking like the divided states. And Fawaz, what has this done to America's reputation abroad, this election cycle? Uh, it's not just America is divided. America has always been divided. It is now much more divided. It Start, has undermined yes. the uh, image of America worldwide. It has undermined the idea of American exceptionalism. It has shown the simplification, the distorted, the nature of the American leadership. You have Iran and China making fun of American democracy. The world cannot understand how could 50 million Americans vote for a person like Trump, a racist, misogynist, um, a, 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 an a incoherent a person who does not understand the world. Uh, people are really raising questions about the idea of America's exceptionalism and American democracy. In this particular sense, this particular uh, election cycle has exacted a heavy toll on the idea of American democracy and American exceptionalism in the world, in the eyes of the world. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I wish we had more to dedicate to this conversation, but appreciate what we've touched on today. In London, Fawaz Georges, the Chair of Contemporary Middle Eastern Studies at the London School of Economics. Chanandan Rajata, Foreign Editor and Washington Correspondent of the Times of India in Washington. And in Toronto, Canadian Alex Mihailovich, a news correspondent for Russian broadcaster RT America. Once again, gentlemen, thank you.